Hey everyone, John here, and this should be a pretty fun video. The uh, The idea for this actually started while I was watching uh, an episode of Easy 8 Online Painting Club. Uh, Danny over there, he's got a uh, channel that uh, it's my motivation company. It's You can paint along and basically just have a good time for two hours every Friday. Uh, he was using a tool from uh, Citadel. It's the mold release or mold removal tool which I have one, but I've used it once, I'm not a big fan. And he mentioned that it's kind of like Marmite. You either love it or you hate it. Well, I've heard of Marmite before, I've never tried it. Uh, I'm a huge Anglophile, big Doctor Who fan, uh, Blake Seven, uh, the whole thing. But, uh, and I've been to the UK a couple times as well, and I've been in the culinary industry my entire life. But I've never tried Marmite. So I figured, okay, well, I mentioned something in the comments and uh, well, Danny challenged me to try it. So I, I couldn't really say no. So uh, I decided I wanted to get a figure that I kind of passed on my entire life. This Jabberwock from Raw Partha, same type of deal. You either love it or you hate it. And I never bought it until maybe about a year ago. I picked up one of these re-releases of it in pewter instead of lead and I decided let's let's make this one into the Marmite challenge so this is one of those figures that when I was growing up and just starting out painting I would actually move this figure out of the way to see what was behind it because I had no interest in this figure at all and it wasn't up until like the last couple of years that I started to see pictures of it online and uh, just thinking to myself, you know what, why not? I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a good sculpt. I don't know why I never wanted it, but let's pick it up and see what I can do now that I've been painting a lot longer than, uh, than just a few years then. So uh, the one thing I, I didn't really care for when I was doing this, this uh, Steinle Res Black, uh, not sure if it's really made for metal miniatures but it just went right through my airbrush really thin I mean I, th I thin it down just a little bit just to make sure it doesn't clog up but the, it, it just really didn't seem to stick, like to stick to the surface as well as it should have so I had actually ended up uh, after it dried I brushed on some more and that seemed to was that seemed to do the trick uh, going with a very light gray here I'm just doing a Zenithal Prime more or less just to get most of the black taken off there just to hide it just keep it in the shadows this way when I come over with my lighter colors I won't have to be using two and three coats just to get past the black with uh, using using the layers and you can see that I'm using my uh, expensive painting handle there uh, I think uh, with all the copays it probably has uh, paid for itself Now in one of the scenes before this, you actually saw me kind of like bending the body forward to fit those wings. The wings didn't fit in right away. I had to bend it a little bit. And since it's pewter and not lead like they used to be, I actually felt and heard some cracks. So I was like, okay, well, I better not try and push my luck here. But nothing happened. Got it all glued in place. Set and ready to go. Now we're just going through uh, putting this uh, yellowish skin tone on the, uh, the belly and in between the, uh, the the fingers on the wings just to get it started here and I turn the turn the airflow down really really low on my airbrush just to just to get the, so it wouldn't be like spraying everywhere just a little bit better control that way and looking back at it now I'm glad I actually did decide to pick up this figure after so many years and go ahead and do it. Uh, sunny Skin Tone from Vallejo Model Color. Just going to go in there and uh, add a little bit more color to those yellowish areas. Give it more of a skin type look to it. And the same thing, I just got the uh, the airflow uh, put down a little bit lower on the airbrush just to uh, have a little bit more control there. 
And I did the uh, the yellow first because I didn't want to try to do yellow over green. This game color, Escorpina Green. It's a really cool looking color. And with this, I just go in with the airbrush. Same thing, low, uh, low airflow. And just being really careful not to go over those yellow areas. And it's fun to go back and revisit some metal miniatures because when when I was growing up, that's all we had. We had the uh, we had the lead figures. Uh, a lot of them were uh, they, they, would, they would come with the swords bent. You'd have to bend them back into shape and be careful not to bend too far, or else it would break off. Uh, these pewter upgrades now they're uh, they're still fun to paint, but I think I prefer the uh, plastic miniatures over over the current metal ones now but doesn't mean I won't stop painting them. Now I could have easily just went in here with a brush and done all the all the layering in here with the with a paintbrush instead of the airbrush, but I wanted to uh, wanted to do it this way because my son just got an airbrush not too long ago and he's learning how to uh, he's learning the basics of it and just wanted to make this video to also help show him it's not as hard as you think to get started with it. It's all about how you thin your paints and how you adjust your airflow. Yeah, so later on in the video, I'll jump into the uh, <laughs> the, the Marmite challenge. And like I said, I, I've I've heard of Marmite before. I know it's a, uh, a yeast extract. It's like a byproduct in the beer making process, but I've never tried it. And yeah, you'll see my uh, you'll see my first reactions to uh, to trying Marmite for the very first time there. It's uh, it's quite uh, quite the experience for me. But uh, going back to the the Jabberwock here, just hitting it with this uh, Escorpina green. And there's going to be a few uh, few spots there after I get done with the green that I will go in with the brush. It looks like uh, I, I'm not too familiar with the uh, with what a Jabberwock is. I know it's from like originally from Alice in Wonderland, uh, but this one has got, it's like a mix of reptile and mammal because there's there's fur all over, like the, like the arms of the wings there. There's some fur tufts going up the neck. So it was, uh, it was actually a fun paint job. And like I said before, I passed on this figure so many times in the past and now getting a chance to redo it it was actually pretty fun and it's funny because like you're so used to getting like cleaning up the the mold lines on these plastic figures these metal ones they'll have bits of pewter just hanging off like the uh the claws there there's these long pieces of pewter that were just sticking off it and i found some like maybe like probably about uh halfway through the painting process too that a few that i missed so that was, uh, I don't know if it was just me being in a hurry or what, but I got them. I got, them. I think I got them all, but don't quote me on that. Uh, Citadel Moot Green going in, just uh, adding a little bit more color to some of these scales, just, just to just to differentiate them from, uh, from the main color. And right there on that finger, I can see one of those pieces of flash that's hanging, on, hanging off of there. Yep, that's uh, those are metal minis, people. But just going in just to give a little bit more color here, and just to add to it, um, Athonian Camo Shade. It's, it's like my favorite green. Yeah, I do have it in a big dropper bottle because I've got quite a bit of it. But I just go in and uh, just give it an all over on the uh, the green areas. It's not as bright and stark as the uh, their uh, their green shade or other green shades, but I really like that color. All right, then I'm using Reichlin Flesh Shade for all the fleshy bits. It's a nice uh, nice color. It's uh, it's got a nice little reddish hue to it, so it's not as uh, not as brown as like an Agrax Earth Shade. But it's uh, yeah, it's one of my favorites, and it really goes well with that Athonian camo shade. All right, going to game color bone white. This is mainly for the teeth. And just got in there really close. I got a new light. It's one of those ring lights, and 
I'm not sure, I'm not positive whether I really like it or not. It just seems to get, get in the way of my camera, but gets the job done. Uh, I don't put it up there, but this is actually Blood Angels Red Contrast Paint for the inside of the mouth and the uh, little bit of goriness on the, the gums. All right, layering with uh, some Cadian Flesh Tone. Just doing a little bit of glazing here. It's not quite, uh, not quite as thick as a layer usually is. Just doing a little bit of glazing, getting some of that pinkish color onto the flesh. And then I do the insides of the wings as well with that. And it's funny though, the longer I spend painting this, the more I like the, uh, <laughs> the more I'm starting to like the figure. Uh, Black Templar uh, contrast paint. Just doing that for the eyes. These contrast paints are really nice if you want to like get into crevices and all that. That's what they're made for. Uh, okay, so 1982. Good grief, that was a long time ago. Uh, I just put it on the base of this one because I'm actually going to glue it onto that plastic base. Okay, normally I would leave something like that alone, but if you watch the last video, which I'll go ahead and put a card up for that, you'll know that I just I changed my tune on bases, and I just really like basing now. Speaking of basing, I got the uh, Vallejo Thick Mud. Just throwing some of that on there. Got a little sculpting tool. Give it a little bit of real estate on there. Clean off that rim. Oh, not with that finger. There we go. Now I'll just leave that to dry. Alright, uh, there's Easy 8 Online Painting Club in the background right there. Uh, two different colors for the uh, for the base. Flat Earth and Mahogany. <laughs> I always get a chuckle with Mahogany because there's a there's an old episode of Doctor Who where this, uh, basically the, the one of the villains in the episode, he's got a, a large mahogany table and it's set in the future and he doesn't know how to pronounce it correctly so he calls it mahogany so anytime i hear mahogany i think mahogany but i'm just hitting it with uh with both colors just to just to blend it a little bit together and we're getting down to the wire on this one so like comment subscribe I and mean, we're uh we're doing we, a little bit of a low with the, sub, the subscribers but that's going to happen but yeah, having a great time with this and uh, yeah, coming up with the, uh, the final reveal here. So appreciate you watching. Take care of yourself. Okay, so breaking in with the Easy 8 Online Painting Club Marmite Challenge. I've been challenged by Danny over at Easy 8 Online Painting Club to try some Marmite. This came about because of an episode of his show that uh, he was using this uh, Citadel mold line removal tool. I have one, not a fan. He said that uh, it's kind of like Marmite. If you, uh, you either love it or you hate it. Well, I've been working in restaurants all my life. Uh, plus I'm a huge Anglophile. I've been to the UK twice and I've never tried Marmite before. So he challenged me and I figured I'd put it on the end of the video for the Raw Partha Jabberwock because growing up it was either you loved it or you didn't. I never had this model until about maybe a year ago. This is actually uh, uh, like a repop uh, off the original mold which uh, came out in 1982. So it's 20 years as of filming this video. So uh, Danny uh, challenged me. And yeah, I, I can't not accept the challenge, so let's do this. Okay, so I'm recording this at my kitchen table because I really don't have the, like, I don't have a studio or anything. So uh, one of the things that Danny mentioned that he likes with his uh, toast with Marmite is some tea for his PG tips. And look at that, I've got PG tips as well. Uh, yep, England's number one tea. Uh, you can tell that I had this for a while. Yeah, as a coffee drinker, I still do drink tea every so often. So, 
why not get the best, right? Okay, so I've got the, got the kettle on. I've got the toaster ready to go. Danny said that the, the way to do it is to toast your bread, get it buttered up really nice, and then give it a nice thin layer of Marmite. Too, th too thick and it's too much. So we're gonna see, okay? Be right back. All right, just coming over with a voiceover on this one. I don't know why I didn't have any kind of narration on it, but this is opening Marmite for the very first time, cracking that seal. There we go. It looks like chocolate syrup. It looks like molasses, but yep, that's the first time I opened it right there and giving it a good smell. It smells salty too, so. All right, back to, uh, back to real time audio. Okay. Maybe I put too much on. <clears throat> I'm glad I put the butter on. Talk with my mouth full. Uh, I'm glad I put the, the margarine on. It's very salty. It's probably not doing anything good for my blood pressure. Let's save some tea help. I'm not going to get rid of it because I've heard that you could add this to different dishes to, uh, <laughs> if it needs salt, <laughs> you can put that in there. Um, it is a, it's a yeast extract. <clears throat> it's actually created from, uh, it's a byproduct from uh, making beer. Yeah, I'm not a fan. Um, Danny, more power to you. I tried it. I think I'll use the mold line release tool before uh, or the mold removal tool before I try this again so because I'm shaking my camera uh, but yeah I did try it and I said I got a second slice of toast that I'm gonna try and just use this to get the taste out of my mouth I think I'd rather paint another Jabberwock, but I tried it, not a fan. I hope this taste comes out of my mouth pretty pretty quickly before I end up just purposely brushing my teeth, so. But I do have my, my tea in my Doctor Who mug, because I'm a lifelong Doctor Who fan. Uh, and I should have a Doctor Who model coming up on the channel here uh, in the next few months so uh, yeah check out Danny over at Easy 8 Online Painting Club uh, it's motivation it's uh, company while you while you paint while you build and come back to out of this world bottles and minis for just more fun okay take care bleh
Hey, if you got this far, thanks a lot. And if you liked the video, check out the playlist on the left-hand side. Okay, we'll see you in the next one.